Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Now, here's Whoa, is that Star Wars music for me or for Jeff Gorham in the house? The new dad here on the Inland Sports team. Congratulations, Jeff Gorham. Thank you. Local Thank you. basketball legend, adding another little boy to the family. Yeah, I, I added, this is the third boy of the Gorham family, uh, little Luke. <laughs> Appropriately uh, named, very, right? Very apropos. So, yeah, it was, he was born this week. Mom and the uh, rest of the family are doing well and just excited to watch this little boy grow up and uh, either throw a 100 mile an hour fastball, hopefully he's left handed, or yeah. <laughs> he's 6'10 and can throw down. So One of the two, right? Yeah, one of the two is fine. Anything yeah. else? No soccer, I'm sorry. I like so eh, He's just he's going to be too tall. Unless he's a goalie. Okay. He could be a 6'10 goalie. <laughs> Not asking for much out of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. He only has to be like Randy Johnson yeah. or, uh, or you, you know, know he, he Dirk Nowitzki. He could be an opera singer. You never know. Whatever he wants to do, that's fine. Well, congratulations, thank you, seriously, thank you. from all thank of us here at the Inland Sports team. Thank you I, I really didn't think we were going to see you in studio today because you had the baby Tuesday. Yep. You got home. We got home yesterday. Yesterday, and now you're here today. Yeah, we had a, a long night of a uh, little baby cooing and crying, you know, and, and I slept on the couch and. All the bedrooms are filled in the Gorham household, and I wanted to give mom some, some space to just kind of be mom. So tonight, I'm what back in my own bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. We've got a lot to get to on the show, and think about this. Beginning this weekend, we will have football every single week until February. Nice. Isn't that? That's a uh, good feeling. That is, that is great. Great film. Love football. We're going to talk Rams. Cam was down there at training camp watching our guy Corey Harkey and the Rams at training camp at UC Irvine. So we're going to talk a lot of Rams in the next couple minutes. In our second segment, we're going to talk UCLA football training camp because Nate Metters, the pride of San Gorgonio High School, um, he's going to check in. They're beginning training camp in Westwood at UCLA before they move out to Camp Coyote at Cal State San Bernardino. So Nate Metters is going to check in. Um, he's a friend of the show. and. He really came on strong at the end of last season. He got some starts as a true freshman, made some big plays. I'm specifically, I'm thinking of the game at Utah. He was all over the place. You would think he had like a twin brother because he was really seriously all over the field. Um, so he's going to check in, talk about his role with the Bruins this year, talk about Camp Coyote and UCLA number 24 in the preseason poll. I saw that and picked the win the Pac-12 South Division. Uh, yes. So that's a, that's the toughest division, really, if you think about it. You got to see. Uh, you've got Utah coming on strong. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's some good teams in the Pac-12 South Division. I know the Pac-12 kind of gets, you know, I don't want to say a bad rap, but people always point to the, uh, the Big Ten, obviously the SEC. Pac-12 has some good football. It does. So, so we're going to talk to Nate Metters in the second segment about that. Uh, Brian Pickering is going to check in from the Little League again. Uh, Brian has some great storylines that we need to follow because the Little League West and Northwest Regionals begin tomorrow. And there's a tie with the UCLA football team. There's a tie to Major League Baseball. And uh, you're going to hear it here first on the Inland Sports Show. So there's some pretty cool things happening out there in San Bernardino as well. And then in our third segment, it's kind of our wrap-up because we've got to talk about Stephen Wright and the Red Sox uh, at Dodger Stadium last Dominated night. Dominated my Dodgers last oh, night. The knuckleballer. Did you see that ball he well, threw to... Oh, yeah. I saw the oh, vine. I don't know how anybody would have hit that. Did you? Yeah, his face, Reddick's face no, was like. Yeah. What, yeah. What, are you, what are you supposed to do with that? I mean, so. uh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so we're gonna, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about our, uh, our local guys at the Olympics and also a reminder about the Athletic Leadership Clinic that's coming up to Riverside next week. Uh, I can tell the interns right now, if they're listening out in the hallway, um, at least two of them will be interviewing Bill Walton next Saturday. It, we've, I've already got it lined up. Wow. Throw so it fight, down. Uh, fight amongst yourselves. I'm throwing out the scraps. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> fight to the finish. Nice. Throw it down. Last man or woman, Aaron's here today, uh, standing will get the Bill Walton gig uh, next Saturday at 10 a.m. So that's pretty cool. You want to do it, Jeff? I mean, I guess you could do it, too. Uh, you know, I've met Big Bill Walton a few times. <laughs> have you really? I have. I met him down in San Diego a few times. As a, as a kid, he would, like, guest speak at every camp around. So he would always show every basketball camp he'd show up. Bill Walton would show up and, and do his little lecture. And he was he's an entertaining guy, to say the least. I miss him on the, the weekly telecast. Yeah, he's so, good. Yeah. So... We're going to give you all the details in the third segment. It's called the Deep Tease. We don't give it to you now. We'll give it to you all the details in the third segment. But Inland Sports will be interviewing Bill Walton. we got it all lined up nice. next Saturday um, at 10 a.m. because he's going to be here for the clinic. we got a lot to get to. It's all brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. Get more information on their travel ball teams and different training programs. Fingers crossed we might get Leonard Russell in here. I know he's got Saturday training camps that he does at Adrenaline, but he's going to try to skip away so we can talk Rams and NFL with him. Former Rookie of the Year, 1,000-yard rusher in the NFL. I mean, he was the man back in the 90s. Great guy and one of my all-time favorites. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I remember him. And then when I actually actually formally met him, I'm like, dude, that's Leonard Russell. He's like, a, he's a beast. He's he a could, physical specimen. Yeah. Just a true man's man. He could still run the rock, I think. I like, if you look at him, you're like, yeah, he could probably still yep. play if he had to. Uh, we're also brought to you by Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate. 909-307-5665 is the phone number. List your home. Find your dream home. They'll hook it all the way up. Check out their ad on the Inland Sports website with our dear, dear friend Joe Miller, who's a big Ducks and Angels fan. Spoiled, quick, quality oil change in Riverside. We appreciate their support. Bill Navigato and his team. I don't know if you've been in there, but they have like uniforms. They look like a team, like a baseball team. They're all matching. It's like it's almost like a NASCAR pit crew. Like they know exactly what to do, and they're very efficient. So it's a beautiful thing. And they take care of you afterwards. They give you, they give you candy. Candy, a flower, they, they, they really take care of you over there. Yeah, how many people, I mean, usually I just get like a greasy, nasty handshake, but there, the, you actually get mints. You do. And flowers, you know, and they walk you to your car, they open the door. You, they would do it for you, Jeff. They would even do it for me. That's I, saying, that's saying I, something. I, would they do it to my bike, though, since I probably yeah. would ride my 10 speed in there. <laughs> you might be the first uh, bicycle to go through. Yeah, yeah. Can you pump up my tires? Yeah, okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and uh, I'm so proud to announce this new partnership. Ken's Sporting Goods has joined the Inland Sports team, and they've been around for 40 years. They're a staple of the Inland Empire. Everybody I know, all the schools go to them. In fact, I was there the other day. They were printing University of Redlands football shirts. Kaiser football had their stuff on the uh, the embroidery machine. So they do embroidery. They do screen printing. They have all the equipment. They've got local gear. Like if you want a, I don't know, centennial football sweater or a hat. All the stuff. They've got everything. They've been around for 40 years. And they're local. And I can't thank Ken and his family and Jason enough. But they're on the show. And at the end of the month, we're going to unveil the Ken's Athlete of the Week. Nice. For boys and girls. And they're having specialty uh, T-shirts printed out. So it's not like we're going to be giving away to everybody. It's only the Athlete of the Week. You're right, Jeff. A select few. Yeah, so if you wear it around school or around town, there's only going to be a handful of those. We're going to have other T-shirts made for Inland Sports, too, but the Athlete of the Week special from Ken's Sporting Goods will be very special. So that'll be, uh, that'll be coming up later this month, so stay tuned for that. We're very excited um, about that. So Rams training camp underway at UC Irvine. Of course, our local guy, our local Inland Empire angle, Corey Harkey, now living in Riverside. He's Training at Adrenaline Athletic Training, we had the chance to interview him over there, and uh, he's gonna—he's like a like a hybrid, like a fullback, tight end, something like that. Cam, but you said he was running a fullback at camp, right? Yeah, he's running a fullback and a tight end. He's running with the ones, you know, running with Goff and Gurley out there. So, looks like he's gonna be a big part of this team. You know, putting a lot of snaps in camp. Line up at fullback probably most of the time, but we would line up at tight end block. He actually caught a few passes, so you know, I not I know he's not much of a you know, catch passing, you know, tight end yeah. and whatnot. He's more of a blocking guy, but it looks like he's going to be a huge part of this team coming this year. He's a big man. Like, he's a big man. Well, you know, they're, uh, aren't, they're, they're hosting their family day today, I believe. It's the first time. Yeah, the Coliseum. Yeah. Los so, Angeles Coliseum. So it's a free, free for everybody to go out and watch and uh, get to watch the little reps with, with the first and second team. And yeah, I saw, I saw them, like, marking the field, like, because – a week from today, they're going to play the Dallas Cowboys, their first preseason game at the Coliseum. And I think it's kind of the way to start people. You know, it's, it's real. It's happening. We're marking the field. The team is here. We're in camp. It's, this, is, this thing's happening right now. It's pretty exciting. It is. I remember the old days of going to Anaheim Stadium and watching the Rams play. And, and now come back to the Coliseum, which is even better. Just to see something, you know, gen that is generating a positive uh, influence of football here. It's nice. It's been a long time. So. The vibe around camp was everybody was excited. You know, players came over to sign autographs. And, you know, you hear shouts from the crowd. We're so excited to have you guys back in L.A. The players said they were excited. So, I mean, it seems like... You know, the vibe is right. Everything is going well. Well, Ken, let me ask you this, because I, I saw some pictures on social media, and I think somebody tweeted out there was like 10,000 people. Yeah, at camp. Like, was it really that yeah, it's, packed? it's busy. You know, you just pay 10 bucks for parking, and then everything after that is free. And, you know, there was, it was really packed out there. A lot of people, you know, sporting their ramp yeah. stuff. They got, like, vendors out I mean, there like 10, selling food. People. It's a big event. It's, I mean, there was celebrities there, a couple rappers that were there, Kendrick Lamar and Schoolboy. Q and they were out there. Well, just, I don't know who those guys no, are, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's a big it's a big event, and people are really excited about it. I've been to 49ers camp and I've been to Chargers camp, and I don't think there was ever 
close to 10,000 people at either of those. No, and, and you know, uh, Dallas still has their camp out here in Thousand Oaks. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we used to go to basketball camp there as a kid, and it was during the same time, so we'd go out there and watch the football players and eat in the same cafeteria with them. It was it was cool as kid, but never I never saw ten thousand people coming to even watch. I think I think people are just anxious, right, to see yeah. the, the Rams yeah. are back and they're just they want to see them, you know, on the field. You know, it's a perfect storm. I mean, you know, they're not asked to really go in and win a Super Bowl this year. You know, I think the fans are just happy they're here. They're bringing in all young players, uh, you know, a new new coaching staff for the most part. A lot of new guys coming in, new coordinators. It's it's going to be the perfect storm. I'm not expecting to win a Super Bowl, but it's nice to see football back in Southern California. So it's going to be cool. And, Cam, when you were at camp, obviously Jared Goff is the guy they sold the farm for, and he's mm -hmm. probably going to be their quarterback of the future. But right now it looks like Case Keenum might be at least their temporary starter. Um, how did Goff look? I mean, was Keenum that much better than him? I mean, could you tell a difference between the two? I mean, you can definitely tell a difference. I feel like the team is buying into Goff a lot more. Um, they split, you know, one's reps, but Goff looked good. I would say Keenum looked good, and the fans were all over Goff. And the fans, that's what they want to see. They want to see the future of the franchise stepping in play, but you just don't know if it's going to happen right now. But Goff looked really good. Um, I don't know who's going to be quarterback week one. Jeff, let me ask you this. So are you one of those guys that says, you know what, man, we just gave up so much for Jared Goff. We have to have him play. Or are you like, you know what? We've got Case Keenum, he's serviceable, he's okay, let's not throw Goff into the fire and completely blow up his career by getting him off to a bad start. we got some time. Where do you fall? What side of the fence do you fall on with You that? know, they're in the NFC West. They were 7-9 and nine last year. You know, you go with the, go with the young guy. I mean, he's, he's going to have to step in eventually. And like I said, it's a perfect storm in the sense that they're not expecting to win, win everything, but let's get that guy in there and play. Um, He's shown his, his ability at, at Cal. He can throw the ball. He's a little thin, but, you know. It's, plus, it's, plus, his biggest job is probably going to be handing the ball off, right, to Tom Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, you can do that. Why couldn't you do that and, and be successful just to get some, some experience on the field? So yeah. I, I say go with the youth movement. Uh, just protect him. Make sure he doesn't get killed out there. And, and they should be fine. I mean, go with it. Consider this. So I'm going to read you off these stats. One guy, I'm not gonna, it's gonna be a mystery player. All right. One player was a first round NFL draft pick, 14th overall. He had 959 rushing yards his freshman campaign, his rookie season. 245 yards receiving and seven touchdowns. That's player A. Player B, also a first round pick, 10th overall, 1,100 yards on the ground, and both were rookie of the year. Sounds pretty darn close, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, like almost yeah, like player yeah, A yeah. and B. Yeah. That's Leonard Russell when he was the NFL Rookie of the Year in 1991, and Todd Gurley, who was the Offensive Rookie of the Year last season for the Rams. And it, I, I just find that kind of interesting that those numbers are so parallel and so close. And uh, you know, when you're the featured back like Todd Gurley is going to be, he already had 1,100 yards in his rookie year. That number's only going to climb, right? Yeah, and it's nice to see running backs kind of coming back into the NFL because it's been so pass-oriented. You know, you've had these these hybrid backs and so forth. It's, it's it, I think it will help the young quarterback. Remember the Wildcat? I do remember. Do you guys remember the, the, the Wildcat? Wild it was great. Wild I loved it. <laughs> what happened to the Wildcat? Oh, I don't know. It's a, you know, it, it's, great it's a great college offense. <laughs> I would say not a great pro offense. Not a good one. But it was, like a gimmick, right? it was a gimmicky. I love gimmicky. But Gurley's going to have a good year this year. I think they should go with Goff, but I just don't think they can come in and name him starting quarterback out of camp. I feel like he's got to quote-unquote earn the job right, like with the players, earn some respect, you know, this, bringing this young guy in, just handing him the job. These veteran guys could just be like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it, just handing him the, handing him the job. I like so I that. He's gotta, that's a good point. You know, I think the coaching staff is expecting him to start week one, but they can't come out and say to the media, this is our starter come week one. They need a you know, a quarterback battle. They yeah. need the team to be competitive, practices to be competitive. So, but I think he can thrive. The good defense, and he's got Gurley as a safety blanket. So, I think yeah, I think the he's ball be all right. So, Nick Foles is out of the mix. He went to Kansas. They released him a couple weeks ago. Now he's in Kansas City. So, it's between him and Case Keenum. I think Sean Mannion from Oregon State somewhere on the on the depth chart. But really, it's Goff and Keenum, and Goff is the the heir to the throne for for the quarterback for the Rams. 
Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure where I'd fall. If you should just let them go for it. Hey, you know what? We sold everything we had to get you. We're, we're going to turn you loose. You're our new shiny toy. Or be like, let's let's ease them into it. I'm not sure where I fall. I guess the preseason games will be telling, mm -hmm. beginning with the Cowboys next Saturday. But how much value do you put in a preseason game? Do you, I mean, do you, you're, it's twos against twos. You know what I mean? Like the backups yeah. against the backups. The practice squad guys against the practice <laughs> squad guys. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But like I said, I mean, if, if we, the, the Rams had been here two, three years and you, you draft golf, would you play them then or would you play them now when it's kind of a transition? I mean, people aren't aren't expecting, you know, to go out and win it all. So you, it, it's a it's it's a sword you're gonna die on. I mean the Chargers had the same the same problem when they had Breeze and Manning was was uh, drafted out of there. But but they were an established program and had been here for a while. I think the excitement of just the Rams being here you, can, you know, you're just going to go with the flow, and hopefully the guy will earn his spot. If he doesn't, then then you go with the uh, veteran and work him, work his way in. Yeah, Keenum's not bad. No, it's not. Bad. He's not bad. But like you said, I don't think anyone's picked him to win the Super Bowl. But you know, they got a good quarterbacks coach. You got, I think, Chris Wanky's the uh, quarterbacks coach, which is, you know, he's a proven. Yeah, he's played in the NFL. Yeah, he's, Florida State. Guy, yeah, right? he's, he's, right. he's a he's an excellent those guys, smart guy. Will teach these guys how to play. He wasn't a great athlete, but he was a good quarterback. So you know somebody like that will that will help a young guy like that. I think he was a, a Heisman Ro Trophy runner-up in fact. So was he? I think so. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. You, yeah. you could be lying to me right now. And I wouldn't even <laughs> tell you. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he, he was. Like I said, he's he's a good a good coach to teach these young guys. So they'll be fine. Good. That, that, that's great. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your uh, word for it because I have no idea. I, I just remember his name was Chris Winky, and I remember like being younger, like, ah, his name's Chris Winky. Like <laughs> Winky on the field over yeah. there. Right? <laughs> Poor kid. So that's your Rams report. Um, we're gonna have some special Rams programming that we'll unveil uh, in a couple of weeks, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna be covering the Rams pretty hard this season, so it'll be fun. So they're at UC Irvine's preseason opener at the Coliseum against the Cowboys next Saturday night. When we come back on the Inland Sports Show, we're going to dive into UCLA football in our exclusive interview with star defensive back Nate Matters out of San Gorgonio High School. That's coming up on the one and only Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Thank God, first of all. I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just, just for certain schools, and, and the, uh, the, fun, the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very, very good customers throughout the years and it's just been, it's just been a blast. specific to what they need. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. I'm Pep Fernandez. We appreciate you joining us here. And we've got a very special guest because UCLA training camp is coming up. They'll be in Westwood for about a week. Then they'll move out to Cal State San Bernardino for Camp Coyote once again. And we are pleased to have the great Nate Metters, the pride of San Gorgonio High School, joining us here on the Inland Sports Show. And Nate, uh, are you fired up just to get this season going? Oh, of course, of course. Especially after uh, the ending we had the last season. Just ready to get ready back to work and uh, start the season off right. We've got Nate Metters here of San Gorgonio High School, UCLA defensive back. And 
Nate, you really burst onto the scene as a true freshman last year. Um, how do you keep that momentum going and try to lock in a starting spot for yourself? Um, I just have to uh, continue to keep working hard and just keep on doing what I need to do. And uh, last year, you know, I had a good uh, good year doing special teams and uh, was able to start the last couple games of the season. So I'm just ready to uh, continue uh in the playbook and just get faster and stronger and uh, just that'll increase my chances of uh, being a starter this year. Now you guys are headed back out to Cal State San Bernardino on August 15th. Um, is that kind of special for you coming back to your own backyard and be able to practice with you know family and friends uh, there to support you? Oh yeah, it's great being able to go back uh, to the Dino and uh, having my family and my friends be able to watch, but you know, the heat is it's just, uh, the heat there is not fun to be in. But, you know, besides the heat, it's, it's cool being back and uh, allowing everybody I uh, played with and all a part of my journey going to UCLA, being on the watch. It's pretty cool. And how do you think being out there at Cal State San Bernardino helps the team come together? I mean, people say, you know, it's hot, it's isolated, it's just you guys and football. I mean, does it really help the team come together in that sense before the season starts? Um, I think, I think so. Yeah, us being able to, uh, to be isolated and being able to just—it's basically uh, talking to each other the whole time. We don't really be able, we're not really able to do nothing like outside. So I feel like it is. Uh, it does help us. We're talking with Nate Metters, UCLA defensive back and San Gorgonio High School product, and. Nate, at Pac-12 Media Day, we were down there covering that, and UCLA was picked to win the Pac-12 South Division um, by the media members. It, is that sort of thing, do you guys embrace, or do you do you put much value in that when you're the preseason favorite, or does it just really matter where you finish up at the end of the season? Uh, I mean, I, I think where we end up, because we haven't won a Pac-12 in so many years, I feel like what we cherish is being able to say we're the Pac-12 champions at the end of this season. Like, we see it, but we don't really mind it. We just keep our head down and keep working. And uh, we're, we're going to have a good year this year, I'll tell you that. So team-wise, you guys should have a good year. Individually, how do you think you've grown and, and improved as a player? Uh, from last year, uh, man, just me being able to know what I'm doing. Uh, learning the playbook and being comfortable, that's, it's, it's made me playing, like, from spring ball, it made playing so much easier. I'm just able to be out there having fun and um, actually play and not be worrying about, oh, what, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? But So just being able to uh, – and I've gotten faster and stronger and my body's developing, so it's just, it's just getting better and better for me. Does UCLA keep a, a a careful eye on you know making sure you're getting three square meals and you've got to put so this much time in the weight room? Do you have a very I guess strict regimen? I guess if you want to call that about you know what you know what you're eating, what you're drinking, how many how many hours you're putting in the weight room? Do they do they really kind of schedule it out for you so you know exactly what what you should be doing during football season? Oh yeah, our strength and conditioning staff does a great job of that. We uh we got a lot of work in in the off season. And, uh, like, we do this, like, we, we measure our body fat, so you do have to watch what you eat. So I think our, our staff does a good job of, uh, of doing all that for us and keeping our bodies right for the season. We're talking with Nate Metters here on the Inland Sports Show. And, Nate, I know you have your position coaches, but how much uh, one-on-one time do you ever get with head coach Jim Mora? And how would you describe his coaching style? <laughs> coach Mora, that's my guy. Uh He's a he's a great coach, honestly. He's uh he reminds me a little bit of how coach my high school coach was, uh, Coach D. So uh, no, nah, he's just a great coach, and he, he just he's real. He's a real coach, and he, he keeps it honest with you, and he does, he's just a great coach. Well, I'm sure Coach Garinger will will appreciate that uh, Jim Mora comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, Nate, we appreciate the time, brother, and uh, we will see you out there at Cal State San Bernardino when UCLA rolls out to Camp Coyote. That's August 15th. They'll be out there for six days, and, and, and Nate, we'll be looking for you out there, man. Best of luck this season. Uh, definitely. Thanks for having me. That was the great Nate Metters, the pride of San Gorgonio High School. Remember at San G, he was a receiver. 
He was a defensive back. He played quarterback his senior year. Just just an all-around, just stud athlete. And I remember asking him at, at camp last year, I'm like, Coach Moore, he, he knows you can play everything, right? Like, you can play quarterback. You, you can play on offense, too. And he, he just laughed. He's like, yeah. He's like, but we got a lot of the other dudes. You know, when you go to UCLA or, or USC, one of these schools, you're just you're one of the guys now. You're not the dude on your team. So, But uh, Nate Manders, <clears throat> he's going to have a huge season. Came on strong last year. Got some starts as a true freshman. And now he's going to be one of the guys that lead that UCLA defense. who's a preseason number 24. So that's pretty cool. It is cool. And it's the best uh, secondary defense in, in all of the Pac-12. So. <clears throat> Kind of nice to be part of that, and uh, and being you know UCLA is gonna be really good in the South this year. I think so. I think uh, I think they're gonna be a force to reckon with. Josh Rosen obviously is is an awesome quarterback. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of his, but I think he's a, he's a good quarterback. I remember him at Bosco, and everyone said how great he was, and then. Well, the, he did beat Centennial once, but Centennial came back and, and blasted him pretty good. So, because you know, I'm a Matt Logan guy, you yeah. know, Evil Empire, Centennial for life over here. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he's he's gonna be he's gonna have a, a, a good year. I don't think he's like Heisman talk or anything like that, but he's gonna be good. Obviously, you know, the defense is gonna fly around, even though they're missing Kenny Clark, um, which he'll make his NFL debut tomorrow. Hall of Fame game, right? That's right. Packers That's and Colts. Right. Um, but I think they're going to be in good shape. If you're looking for their UCLA uh, football training camp schedule, it's up right now on the Inland Sports website. They begin on Monday, August 15th, and they wrap it up on Saturday, August 20th at 1230. That's all at Cal State San Bernardino. And uh, that final day is usually like the fan fest. They bring out, like Cedar Brothers comes out, and they bring out like free food and stuff, and the players sign autographs and take pictures. So it's a neat deal. And for the players, um, they appreciate, I guess you'd call it the isolation of being out at Cal State San Bernardino Camp Coyote because they live in the dorms. All they do is, you know, think and play and watch football. That's all they do. It's, it's all football, you know, and, and they're, they're in San Bernardino. They're stuck yeah. up in the dorms. Yeah. Yeah. So, There's not much to do outside of Cal State San Bernardino. So. It's hot. Yeah. Uh, you just stay in the dorms. You watch film. You take ice baths after practice. I mean, that's pretty much their, uh, their daily routine out there. So. So if you're looking for their schedule, I know a lot of youth teams like to go out there and watch the Bruins. Um, check it out on the Inland Sports website. And another college football note, Anthony Catalano, speaking of Centennial, the former quarterback, right? Yeah. Is at Southern Utah. I remember passing through a good old Cedar City, Utah not picture, too long ago. There was a picture of you yeah. uh, on, uh, on social media. You're exactly right. I put that on there. I'm, I'm a huge Anthony Catalano fan. And uh, his dad, I told him, hey, if you got video or pictures, Hit me up because I want to see what Anthony's up to because uh, I love the Centennial quarterbacks. You know they don't they don't get enough love. All they do is win. They do win. All they do is win. But they're like, well, they're not big enough. They're not strong enough. But all they do is win. So he's at Southern Utah, and his dad sent me some uh, video from uh, their their fall camp over there. So if you're watching this live and amplified around the world on the Inland Sports Channel, that's that's video from Cedar City. Came in last night from Mr. <laughs> Catalano. So uh, Anthony out there. Wearing number 18, which is a little weird, because he's always he was always number eight at Centennial. But I, I I heard this. He's the first quarterback to win four CIF titles. He had three state championship game appearances and two Pac-5 titles as the Centennial quarterback. Oh, that's pretty good stats. That's pretty unbelievable, right? If you're talking about a high school career. That is true. That's, that's like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar stats. You win everywhere you go. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty insane yeah, what, yeah. what he did at that Centennial. Is impressive. So it's a good reminder that uh, if you know you know a high school athlete out there, or uh, you know that has gone on to a college and, and they're in training camp right now, to, to please let us know about it. Send us your pictures, send us your video. We'd love to give you some loves here here on the show as well. But Anthony Catalano out there at Division One Southern Utah trying to win that starting job. So uh, we're, we're rooting uh, for uh, Anthony Catalano out there because the Centennial quarterbacks, like I said, uh, we got Robert Weber. Who's at Humboldt State? Hayden Gavitt. I think he's still at Dixie State. So, all they do is win. Yep. All they do is win. So, uh, best of luck to him. Uh, in a couple moments, we're gonna hear from Brian Pickering from uh, the Little League West Region. It's the West Region and the Northwest Region uh, taking place in San Bernardino. It begins tomorrow. The winners of each of those regions go on to Williamsport, the Little League World Series. So, it's a big deal. They get huge crowds out there. ESPN is out there doing all the games. So um, it's a very big deal, and they've got, I don't know how they do this, but they've got all these former major leaguers coming out that throw ceremonial first pitches. You know, they talk to the, the little league teams, they sign autographs and do all That's that cool. stuff. Um, the one I'm looking forward to, uh, because last time it was just so awkward. Fernando. Uh, Fernando Mania, Fernando Valenzuela. <laughs> so 
You're like, do you remember me? I ambushed you that one time, and you got all weird. You, you're weird. That's I remember you telling the story. He'll say, no say. You know? hey, that is the best, best youth sporting event in the West Coast by far. I mean, you, you, you drive down the freeways, and you see everybody painting their cars. Yeah. Saying, you know, World Series bound. It's pretty cool. So if you get a chance to go out there and watch, it's something I would suggest. Uh, the whole family can go out and enjoy it. It's great baseball. I mean, we're talking Alaska, Hawaii, all the way down the West Coast, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Utah, Nevada, Arizona. And then you had the Newport Beach teams that were always a perennial stud. They won it a few times, actually. You know what? I just read this. Um, I've got some friends who do TV in San Diego. I guess the San Diego teams, like Chula Vista, like the yes. Southern Bay, uh, they've, been, they've been cleaning up in the Southern California uh, regional because they're always advancing to the West region. It's always like a team yeah. from San Diego now. Yeah. So they're pretty proud about that. They, they hang their hat on that about the fact that San Diego's got such good youth baseball right now. But uh, So the Southern California team, the Northern California team, all the teams on the West Coast. So they break it up. So there's a West division, there's a Northwest division, and each of those winners go to the Little League World Series. So it's not just one team, it's actually two for baseball. Very cool. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big deal. Like I said, former major leaguers out there, and uh, Brian Pickering scheduled to call the show. He pointed this out, and I, and I love this fact, that Jim Mora, the head coach for the UCLA football team, they'll be at Camp Coyote at Cal State San Bernardino, okay? The same time. Same time, beginning August 15th. So just down the road, his brother, Steve Mora, is the baseball coach for the Bend Little League team from Oregon. So we got the Mora brothers down the street from each other just by happenstance. That's cool. Just down the street. It's, it's just kind of crazy. So I wanted to ask him, him um, you know, the fact that, they're so close together. I wonder. I wonder if Jim can peel away just for a little bit. Oh, he better. I mean, especially if they were playing for a championship, yeah, like yeah. with a, a Little League World Series berth on the line. Yeah, even if you're, even if it's not, you just got to go see your brother. You got to support him. So that's that's literally a stone's throw away. Yeah, it, it's right there. Yeah. So it's just kind of weird that the stars aligned uh, for that fact to, to to make that happen. So there's like former major leaguers that manage these little league teams, and and like I said, all the. Mi past Major League Baseball players who, who come on there to do the ceremonial first pitches. and um, So it's a lot, there's a lot going on, and uh, a lot of big names will be running around the ballpark. So right now, let's go to the Ken's Sporting Goods Celebrity Hotline. is Brian Pickering from the Little League West region. Uh, Brian, we were just talking the fact that Jim Mora, the head football coach for the UCLA Bruins, will be just down the street from the Little League uh, West region. Uh, that's pretty cool. So Steve Mora is the head coach for the Oregon team, correct? Yes, he is. And uh, Steve's son, uh, Jim, or, um, yeah, Jim's uh, nephew, Julian Mora, is on the Oregon team. And unfortunately, last year, UCLA was training at Cal State San Bernardino when the tournament was going on. This year, our tournament ends the 13th, and they come to San Bernardino on the 15th. So we miss out. So we're hoping to see Jim Moore out here because UCLA practice starts tomorrow the 7th. Wow, that would be pretty cool. Maybe we uh, sign him up for a first pitch or something, right? <laughs> uh, that's what I was shooting for. But, uh, you know, if it happens, it's going to be a, a last-minute thing if he can get out here. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Maybe uh, Oregon can make a deep run and get to that championship game or something, kind of sweeten the deal. But uh, we were just talking about all the major leaguers, Brian, that are going to be out there. Uh, I want to point out one of the managers, one of the head coaches for the, uh, for the Little League teams, the team out of Utah, Brandon Lyon pitched six, uh, I'm sorry, a dozen years, 12 seasons in the majors, Toronto, Boston, Arizona, Detroit, Houston, and my Mets. Um, that's pretty cool when you see a major leaguer giving back to the youth and, you know, kind of passing on what they learned and their experiences, of course, so they've made it to the top, and now he's coaching Little League Baseball. Yes, and it's, and it's terrific to see Brandon. He was actually out here last year as one of the coaches for Utah, but this year, he has the whole enchilada, so to speak, because he's the manager of the team this year. And uh, what a pleasure to, to be around him. He, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. He's very humble. And um, I, I was just talking to him this morning and saying, hey, did you hear about your uh, Utah softball team? You know, And he said, yes. And, and we had our softball tournament here a week ago, and Utah ended up winning it. And they're going to the uh, Softball World Series. First time that Utah has won any regional level at any at any level uh, in the West. And so Utah is very excited for its softball team right now. And uh, let's see what the baseball team does, uh, because Brandon Lyon is very knowledgeable. He's a good coach, and uh, he has a good group of kids. Talking with uh, Brian Pickering here of the West Region. And 
And Brian, have you, I know the, the softball tournament was introduced, um, you know, not too long ago. The baseball's been around for a long time. But has, have you ever had the same state win baseball and softball in the same year? We, as far as I can recall, no. Uh, but you know what? Uh, there's a first for everything, as you know, especially in the world of sports. So, uh, you know, that could very well happen. I mean, if Utah wins, goes, you know, uh, wins and goes back to the World Series, we'll have our first. Uh, so you never know. You know, it's a, it's a wait and see situation, but we invite the fans to come out here uh, the 7th through the 13th and, and root on Utah and all the other state teams that are out here. Uh, the, the quality of baseball for this young age will blow you away. I mean, there are some some awesome kids that you see. They're very talented. Uh, you can tell that, um, you know, besides the hard practice, they have God-given uh, abilities. And uh, it's, it's a joy to watch. And, and the best thing is, all the games are free, so you can't beat that. Hey, and I, I bet you, Brian, that there might be a future major leaguer somewhere on one of those teams that you're going to see uh, at, here at the, what, 11, 12 years old. Yes, and uh, it's you know sometimes you can you can spot you can spot them at a young age. Uh, you can see where they're going to go on to play college ball, and who knows what happens after college. Uh, but we've had we've had several players that have come here and have played in the uh, 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 not not only the major leagues but also the NFL. Uh, we have Brian Seid, of uh, you know longtime quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, he played here as a youth. Uh, Sean Burrell. Uh, played for the Padres out uh, of Long Beach. And, of course, they won back-to-back -back World Series in the early 90s. Uh, Ken Hubbs, the late, great Ken yeah. Hubbs, uh, he played in the Western region and went to the 1954 World Series. Now, that was long before the complex was here in San Bernardino, but he represented, along with his Colts and Lions team, uh, California in the 54 World Series. So you never know who you're going to see. And Brian, the opening ceremonies are tomorrow night, right? Is, is that a good time for people to come out and kind of get, maybe if they haven't been out before, get introduced to what this is all about? Yeah, we'd love to have anyone come out. Uh, it's, good for, it's scheduled for approximately 6 p.m., and when I say approximately, it, it depends on the length of the 4 o'clock game uh, between Wyoming and Washington. Uh, if it goes long, then obviously the, the opening ceremonies is backed up. But uh, fans can come out, watch that game, stay and watch the... Um, the opening ceremonies, and I guarantee you there's going to be some, some treats involved, so you'll want to be out here for that. And then at the last game of the evening is going to be a great game. It's going to be, well, in fact, they're all great. But as far as if you're from California, it's no cow against so cow. And that always draws thousands of people out here. So uh, as Lewis Brewster said in his column this week, get out here early if you plan on coming to that game because the seats fill up quickly. It's going to be some great baseball. You've got good food out there. It's a fun atmosphere. You're going to have Major League Baseball guys running all over the place. There's a complete uh, schedule of the, uh, I guess you could say, celebrity sightings uh, for the ceremonial first pitch uh, right now on the, uh, the Little League West Region uh, Facebook page. So, Brian, we appreciate the time. You will see us out there. We're excited about this. Anything else we need to know about this? Uh, just, uh, you know, again, come out here early. You know, watch the kids practice. Uh, you know, partake in the different, we have different vendor booths out here. Uh, we have Honda, we have Canon. Uh, you can get free photos taken at Canon. And uh, uh, just, you know, you, again, we have a, a, a slew of uh, former major leaguers that are coming out. We have Kevin Gross, Calvin Pickering, no relation. Uh, Fernando Valenzuela is coming out again this year. Chad Zerby, Mike Sweeney, and Kevin Mitchell. So they're all going to be out here. And as you mentioned, it's up on our Facebook page and with the dates and times, and they can check it out. Brian, you're the best. We'll see you out there. Thank you, Pat. Take care, sir. All right. That's Brian Pickering from the West Region. We appreciate him calling in, checking in. It is a huge deal. It's on ESPN. They get thousands of people out there, and we want to just give them a little love. Question for you guys. Cam's my baseball guy, so he might know this, too. Kevin Mitchell was a stud. He could, he could hit tons of home runs. But there's an iconic play that he's known for. What is that iconic play? Gorham, come on. Help me out here. I, I don't. I, you I, guys don't. I just remember him hitting bombs. <clears throat> Struck out a lot, but could hit the ball. Yeah. He was part of the Pacific Sock Exchange. Will Clark, Kevin Mitchell, Matt Williams. No, anybody? Pacific Sock Exchange for the Giants? No. No, okay. Uh, no, he made the barehanded catch in the outfield. Uh, well, 
Uh, that I do remember a barehanded catch. I didn't know it was Kevin Mitchell, but I think he, I think it was the Giants in St. Louis, and he was playing left field, and he was tracking this ball down. I think he might even went into foul territory, but like he reaches out. It was almost like a Willie Mays kind of catch barehanded. Wow. And I remember, you know, just being a baseball nerd, I, they put that on everything. I all do. the commercials and, like, anything you can think of associated with Major League Baseball, it was Kevin Mitchell with a barehanded catch. Nice. And you're a NorCal guy, so. Yeah. So well, we had a lot of Giants yeah, on TV. Yes, you did. Cam, do me a favor. Google Kevin Mitchell barehanded catch in the break. Can we do that? Yeah, I can okay. do that for you. When we come back in our last segment, we're going to talk about Stephen Wright, a.k.a. Knuckle Puck. That's his nickname. That's right. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, make fun of him or anything. Uh, Stephen Wright tossed a gym last night at Dodger Stadium. We're going to talk a little Olympics and remind you about the uh, Athletic Leadership Clinic that's coming up with Bill Walton. Do you have a Bill Walton impersonation? Throw it down, big man. That's about it. <laughs> Zeke does a pretty good one. If he was here, he'd bust it out. So we're going to talk about that. It's all coming up here on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Oh, Focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. Every sport that we offer here, the performance training is definitely specific to what they need. What a time to be alive! We're back on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. It's been a nice show. We're kind of like easing into football season a little bit. Get excited. It's happy gonna, times, happy times. It's going to hit like a ton of bricks. And I wish Cam, I know Cam's got to do his baseball thing at Holy Names, but I wish you'd stay around here because I could really use them for football season. I would but. love it. I would love to be here. Maybe during winter, winter, uh, winter break, I could come back down, help you out a little bit. Yeah. See, being a basketball coach, I still like football, high school football. Way better than high school basketball. Do you really? I always have. I always have. You know, I, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of brainstorming right now. So the high school football state championship games, I believe, are back in Sacramento. Let's say Centennial is playing for the state title again. I'm just saying, Cam's up there, right? He's right there. Is it an hour drive? Maybe an hour from Maybe Oakland to Sacramento. I mean, I'm all in. They're there. I'm so, in. He's a correspondent. Yeah, exactly. I'll be there. So. We're proudly brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. They do training programs. They do boot camps. You go there, do a boot camp. Your kid could get in the batting cage. I mean, there's all, all kinds of stuff going on there. So, And then you know they're going to hook it up with Leonard Russell running the show. So we love them. We appreciate their support. Spoiled, quick quality oil change. Flowers, mints, and they change your oil too. Yes. You know, can you believe that? So they're the very best, and that's why we got them on here with us as well. We appreciate their support. Remax Advantage, nobody sells more real estate. Nobody. 909 307 5665 is the phone number. And uh, if you're looking for that dream home, listing your home um, anywhere in the Inland Empire from Arrowhead all the way down here, they'll, uh, they'll find it. A, a shanty or an igloo, they'll find it for you. What do you prefer? Do you have a preference? I'm a shanty guy. Are you? Yeah, yeah I don't you live kind of like that. Yeah. yeah, I definitely look like a little shanty. <laughs> <laughs> and our newest sponsor, Ken's Sporting Goods. Been around for 40 years. Started in 1976, and they've only gotten bigger and better since then. 
Like I said, all the local schools go there. Hey, and I and bought my Letterman's jacket from there. Did you really? I did. Everybody I, does. Everybody does. That's the only place you can get Letterman's jackets these days. And they would they embroider it. They do everything for you over there. In fact, when I was there on Thursday, who did I run into? Leonard Russell. He was buying some shoulder pads for one of his sons who plays football. Nice. Everybody, go, every, yes. everybody goes to Kins. I used to get my basketball scorebooks from there. I get my, my hats if I'd order from my coaches. Oh, yeah. Everything from Kins. Everything. Everyone listens to us, and everyone goes to Kins. That's why we made this match made in heaven. And a little bit later in the month, we're going to unveil our Kins Sporting Goods Athletes of the Week. Awesome. Every single week. And you know what? I can't give all the details yet, but we're going to need your help. It's going to be a social media contest. Ooh. So, guys, I'm in. You, I, mean, I know you do the social media. I'm, I'm getting guess. into it a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying my best. That's not your selfie. You know, yeah, I took a selfie last night. First, yeah, that's my first, it. It was that was nice. my first selfie ever, it was actually. Nice. <laughs> that's great. Your first selfie ever. Come on, Jeff. Yeah, because I really don't like looking at my, myself. I have, a, I have a face for radio. Well, that's why we brought you on the team. Yeah, it's perfect. You can't put me on video. Ever. <laughs> uh, if you're not into radio, if you like TV, Sports Weekly on IEMG TV is back on TV. Uh, Charter Cable 3, Time Warner 3. It's also on Verizon and AT&T U-verse. And if you watch it this week, we've got an interview with Adam Quintana from San Gorgonio High School. Got the win for the High Desert Mavericks against the Inland Empire 66ers. So I'm on the field at San Manuel Stadium. I saw that. Did you see it? The pie in the face? Yeah. I was doing the interview, and I saw the guys coming towards me with the pies, right? So I'm thinking to myself, you know, your brain races a mile, you know, yeah. a thousand miles a minute. And I'm thinking to myself, how long do I hang in here? Because I don't want to give this away, but I've, I've got to stay in here long enough that Adam's going to keep looking at me because if he turns, I'm going to blow this whole thing. So I'm standing there with my microphone, and I'm hanging in there till the last minute. It's like a curveball coming at you. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to hang in there. I'm, I think it's going to break. I hung in there, and then I jumped out of the way at the last moment and hit two guys, two pies, two pies <laughs> to the face. So if you're watching this live at Amplified right now on the Inland Sports Channel, you can see a picture of it, but if you want to see the video, and it's pretty funny. Uh, it'll be on Sports Weekly on IEMG TV. And what time and day can we catch you doing that, Beth? Uh, it's Tuesdays at 8 o'clock is the first episode of the week, and it replays throughout the week. Okay. And you can also check it on, on their YouTube channel, which is IE Media Group. So. Sounds good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It was a fun. I, I had no idea what was going to happen. I was out there just trying to, you know, talk to him. He, he made it up to double A last year. He's in single A right now, but he's pitching pretty well, so I think it's just a matter of time before he gets the call to go back up. Um, and we were just, you know, out there. Only the field crew was on the field. It was just me and him. And then from the corner of my eye, I see two of his teammates were now in the dugout behind him. And I'm like, oh, you go to these minor league games, you catch fights, you catch pies in the face. Yeah, you know what? I didn't think about that. You're just a gem at the minor league level. <laughs> you just catch everything. <laughs> Something happens when I go to these minor league games. I'm telling you, they're, they're going to pay you to go out there. They're going to pay you to, to show up. You'll be running the bases. <laughs> So that's fun. So check that out with Adam Quintana of the High Desert Mavericks. Um, I want to give a shout-out to, and we love shout-outs on the show, Old Knuckle Puck, Stephen Wright of the Boston Red Sox. Um, tossed, I don't even know what you, was, was it a gym? What would you call it, Cam, last night? It was. He put on a show, you know, for people that probably went out to go see him because he's, you know. Are you a Dodger fan? I am so a Dodger team? fan. I, Were you torn? It was, it was torn. It was, I, you know, really like to watch him pitch. Yeah. Not any knuckleballers in the major leagues right now, so it's really cool to see him do that. And it was against my Dodgers, so I want him to win, but, you know, I was hoping for like a one nothing Dodger win. You know, he gives a one run. He pitches a gem, gives up the one run, we get the win. But instead, we got. And it went viral. You, 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 you yeah, saw that it too. Ball was, Josh Reddick, he struck out looking. He just stood in the box and looked at him like, I don't know how you did that. And there was no way. If you did it ten times, there's no way I'm going to make contact. No. It was filthy. Because he could throw that same pitch ten times, and it will go in probably ten different spots. Yeah, he doesn't even know where yeah. he's going. It's just, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like His catcher, you got to take him out to dinner, buy him a watch, yeah, something. And his arm's probably not tired. He got to go home with the family. Yeah. It was just an easy night for him. Yeah, he had to do like eight. I don't know. Here it is. It was a complete game. Complete game, so nine innings. You know, yeah. He's probably fine. He's, yeah, Shut he's out. Fine. Gave up yeah. just three hits, nine strikeouts. He's 13-5 and five now as the Red Sox beat the Dodgers, nine zip. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Being from Moreno Valley, from the pride of Valley View High School, to go to Dodger Stadium and pitch a game like that. It's unbelievable. That's like a dream. That's what you dream about in your backyard. Yeah. When you're yeah. running around Mobile as a little kid and you got the wiffle ball and you're throwing it against a fence, that's what you're dreaming about. And, and you got uh, Vince Gully talking about you. Oh, yeah. There's nothing better than that. So. The boy from Moreno Valley. <laughs> that's pretty good, Pep. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good Vin. I do a Vin, a little Lucas Duda routine. You do? I don't know, yeah. 
I don't know if I should do it right now. Yeah. Is it sacrilegious to make fun of it? That's your guy, though, isn't it? Dude is your guy. Yeah, Lucas Duda, the pride of Arlington High School. That's right. Yeah, so maybe bring it up another show. All right, I, well, I, 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 might, I might bust it out for you, the, the Vince Scully impersonation, but and it has to do with Luke. I don't know why Lucas Duda, just because I'm a Mets guy, I guess. Yeah, that's right. And he's local. So, yeah, Stephen Wright, in fact, I, I texted Stephen Wright this morning just to say congratulations, what a game. Um, I know this might be a shot in the dark because it's game day, but maybe you could call the show. And I looked and see, to see that the Dodgers actually have an afternoon game. So yeah. he's probably in uniform on the field. If they had a night game, there, he probably would have done it. He, he's, he's done the show before. He probably would have done it. But because it's an afternoon game, he's already in business mode. Yes. Business is booming. He's at work. Boom. It's over. So, anyways, we were trying to get Stephen Wright, but he had a great game last night, and we're, we're just proud that he's an IE guy. I mean, man. And he throws the knuckleball. I just love the novelty of the knuckleball. Yeah. What if he wins the, the Cy Young this year? Could he? 13-5? and five? I mean, like, he's... He's got a very strong case. Yeah. He's got to go hard. He's got to go well in the second half here. Got to keep winning. Well, Boston's going to need him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're to, in race for sure. to, yeah, to, to keep uh, where they're at. So, Rick Porcello, he's having a good year. Anyways, I'm not going to bore all you uh, guys out there with baseball nerdisms, but uh, yeah, David Price. Anyways, they're in good shape, and Stephen Wright had a, had a great game last night. Uh, Major League Baseball trade deadline update, Jesse Chavez, the pride of Miller High School now with the Dodgers. Um, he used to start for the Oakland A's, but they got him in the bullpen right now. And then uh, the Vato from Rialto, Ricky Nolasco, back. back to the Angels. So that's pretty cool. Listen, let me ask you this, Jeff. You, you and Tim Hatch still friends? Still best of friends. Tim Hatch, the head He's basketball coach at Citrus Hill High School. He keeps blowing me up during, during the show. We're doing a live broadcast on Fox Sports Radio, plus we're live and amplified around the world. Uh, he says, Jeff Selfie hangs in Knott's Scary Farm. <laughs> come on, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the one. You have a Frankenhead right now, so you got to <laughs> So, you know, just, just drive around in your car. He's driving around the block listening to the radio, because that's what Tim does. He doesn't really. He doesn't do anything except drive around. He's a weird guy. Yeah, and his, and his, mini, his minivan, right? He does. Like, yeah, minivan. So. And he says, uh, du Duda in DET, which must be Detroit. Duda in Detroit losing to Tigers. Yeah, well, thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, yeah. thanks for the Detroit update. That's like the, the world's greatest place. He's, hey. just, he's just Mr. Sunshine. Mets are losing. Duda's losing. Jeff, Jeff has an ugly face at Not Scary Farm. I'm, hey, just, just, you're from Detroit. That's all we can say, buddy. He is from Detroit, yeah. Take him to Detroit. He single handedly destroyed a television set. He single I mean, a studio, I should yeah, say. And he single handedly studio. destroyed a city. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a dying city, and it, it, it died with, with Tim leaving. So. Uh, okay, yeah. listen, we got to keep this moving because we're running out of time here. The uh, the Olympic yeah. Games got underway officially last night, although there's been some soccer and stuff like that. Five hours? That was a five-hour event last night. Did you watch night. it? No, you know, I was, I was, I was doing uh, skin time with my new my newborn baby. Yeah. And I was some through the channels, and I started, I think it was, it started at 7, and it went till 12.30 at night. I'm like, what are you kidding me? Five and a half hours. So, no, I didn't watch the whole thing. I went to see Giselle Bunchen. Yeah, she was on there, right? Yeah, she did a she little, was, She's yeah. Brazilian? Yeah, she's right? pretty, she better be. Yeah. <laughs> she's walking around. So I saw a little Giselle Bunchen, and that was about it. I just like St. Bunchen. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of locals that we're going to be keeping an eye on. Sarah Hammer, who does um, cycling. Uh, Sarah Robles, the weightlifter. Taylor Zander, who's on the volleyball team. Whitney Ashley from North, a discus thrower. Shante Lowe, um, who's a high jumper. Chris Bernard, a triple jumper from Sun. Tiago High School. Right. Brendan Martinez, UCR, distance runner, 1,500 meters. Um, we had the synchronized swimmers here. For, uh, we claim them yeah. now because yes. they train at you RCC. Yeah, we claim them. And, uh, of course, Ricky Fowler, the golfer out of Marietta Valley, who I think was interviewed on uh, NBC's broadcast last night, Ricky Fowler. So he was one of those guys that was kind of on the fence whether yep. to do this or not. But he's there, and uh, he's going for the gold, red, yes. white, and blue. So, anyways, uh, the third annual Riverside Athletic Leadership Clinic is coming next Saturday. Bill Walton, I don't even have a Bill Walton impersonation, but Bill Walton will be the keynote speaker at 11 a.m. Inland Sports will be there covering the event. We've already got the Bill Walton interview locked in. We're excited about it. You've got big names, yeah. big names here. It's a huge deal, and we're going to be there. Uh, we're brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. We appreciate their support. Spoil, quick quality oil change, Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. 909-307-5665, and of course, Ken Sporting Goods, 
40 years going strong and counting, and the Athlete of the Week coming up very soon here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Guys, it's been fun. Camp, thanks for going to Rams Camp and checking out Corey Harkey for us. And uh, Jeff, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It's been a fun week, and it's always fun coming in here and getting away. We'll see you next week. Yes. And there's the Star Wars music. That's our cue. We gotta go save the galaxy, right? Luke, I, I, got, I did say that. Do it. Do I, it. I said I, when when Luke came out this week, I said I, I said Luke, I am your father. <laughs> and, and, and no joke, the anesthesiologist goes, Hey, how's this at Comic Con? I love Star Wars. Oh, no, yeah. So it, Star Wars nerds all around. <laughs> so everybody, every everybody in the whole room, because it was a C section. There's like a team of people in yeah. there, and they were all saying, Hey, the, the force is strong with this. Oh guy. my god. So, so my, you were uh, right at home. And my wife was like, where the hell? Where the heck am I? <laughs> Tatooine, you're on yeah. Jakku. Where are you? It was, it, was, it was pretty special, though. But that was the first thing I said to my son and handed them to mom. And mom just looked at me, rolled her eyes. and It was, it was a good day. I couldn't, I, I couldn't ask for a better day. Well, Jeff, congratulations. And uh, we will see you next Saturday here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM.